Welcome, Mike Rondo here. Uh, smoking in my Morgan pipe. And I'm having uh, some cobblestone hot chocolate. For reasons I don't know why. Um, especially considering what I'm about to talk about tonight. Anyway, enough of that. Oh man, that smells good though. Tonight I'm talking about this. Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark by Alan Schwartz and the artwork uh, by Stephen Gimmel. Uh, there's four things I'm going to talk about. It's kind of a review of the book, the audiobook, the movie, and then the documentary that I just watched too. So uh, I've been wanting to do a review of this because I read all of the stories. They're very short, so it doesn't take too long. And it made me uh, get delayed with my other stuff, uh, the, other, the other books I'm reading. But in any case, I'm going to get into the book. And now this series, I was a little too old when it came out. Um, well, it was, it was around, I was of age, I guess when it came out, when did this come out? In the 80s, what, what year did this come out? I think it was, uh, hold on, let me see if I can find the, the date here. Maybe not. Well, in any case, I think it was the, I was just a preteen, I think, when it came out. So, it didn't interest me for some strange reason, but, um. I, I heard of it. I just never got into it for whatever reasons. I always thought, I think when I was of that age, I'm like, ah, that's for younger kids. It's not really anything uh, too exciting, I guess. I don't know. For some reason, I didn't read it. But I did read it, and I'm kind of regretting I didn't read it back in the day. Um, there's three books. Um, so you get more stories. So this is the, uh, the original right here. And... Uh, this was a delight. Like I said a few weeks ago, I was reading this. Um, I, I turned the lights off and I was smoking my pipe. I had the lanterns lit. I didn't have the fireplace at the time. Now I do. Um, and this is incredible. The artwork, uh, of course, this is a revised edition, but they did put back the artwork from the original artist uh, from Steve Gimmel. Thankfully, they did that. Because uh, that artwork is just, it's incredible, it's haunting, it fits the book. And, uh, you know, here we go, here's one of them. Here's one of the classic ones. Uh, it's, it's just awesome. The Haunted House, which is essentially what the movie is, really. But I'll get to that in a second. But the books, and this is a quick review. I mean, I'm not going to, i got several things to cover. I'm not going to be able to give a detailed review, and there's other people that have done that um, about the book series. But I highly suggest picking it up, especially if you want to get in the spirit around Halloween. Although you could, you could read this at any point, really. You could, you could talk about it. Uh, you know, in the summer you could tell these stories as well, around the campfire or whatever. They're just, they're really fun. And I highly suggest you get I'm glad I picked it up, and I picked it up for the channel. And to finally read it and say, oh, well, let's see what it's about. I thought it was really going to be very kid-oriented, but it's really folklore and myth and scary stories that we've kind of all grew up with and, and whatnot. So it's really fun for adults and for uh, kids. I know there was, I'll get into the documentary at some point, but uh, next up I'll speak about the audiobook, which I actually thought was pretty good because although the person that's doing the audiobook, I don't know, some stories they were perfect for it, other stories they were like, eh, maybe not. Um, but overall, I enjoyed it thoroughly, driving to and from work with the audiobook, um, especially with the singing. The singing, I think, is where it really shines because, well, I don't really sing, and although there's, uh, I guess, like uh, songs in there to sing, I'm not really a singer, so by nature, I'm not really one to, uh, you know, uh, break out in the song. So to hear someone else doing it is interesting. The other really cool thing about the audiobook is the fact that it being stories that are to be told, 
it's cool that uh, someone's reading to you. So you don't you take off the I don't want to call it a distraction, but you take off the chore, not the chore, but like the you know you're reading it, which is kind of you're concentrating on reading. So you maybe not formulate the full picture in your head where you sit back, at least with a scary storybook like this, and someone's reading to you, and you kind of formulate the picture a little bit more, and I don't know, it, it just brings a different element to it. So that was pretty cool. It was great. Uh, it's pretty short. Like I said, it was. I think it was six hours long, maybe the audio book, I want to say. And again, like reading the book itself, really quick. They're really short stories. You can get through it really quick. Um, Definitely worth checking that out. And finally, I'll come to the movie. Now, the movie, I remember when it, the previews for it came out last last year sometime. I think it was at the end of the year. I think it was around this time now that the movie came out. And I remember thinking, okay, that looks interesting. What, what is this? Isn't this based off of a book or whatever? And so I, this is when I started doing my little research on it. And I'm like, oh, it is based off the thing. I'm wondering how they're going to tell this because you read the thing about the book. You're like, oh, well, this is a bunch of, a collection of stories. How is this going to play in the film? Are they just going to tell each story differently? Uh, and you see the trailers, you're kind of like, okay, so they're, you kind of, they're telling stories, but there's kind of a main theme going on there. But so I'm like, okay, I'm glad I read the book, listened to the audiobook before I did the movie. I, I recommend you do that. Don't go watch the movie and then this because I think you need to pick up on those little Easter eggs. So I think it's important that you read the book definitely before you check out the movie. You know, because sometimes some uh, movies you can check out the movie then go back to the book like I did with my Jurassic Park. Like I've seen the movies and just recently I started reading the book for whatever reason. I never read the book. I, don't, I have no idea why, but I just never did. Man, this smells so good. Um, so definitely do that. Now, the movie itself is basically the haunted house story. Just told in a little different... That's like the main theme going through. Like, that's the thread that goes through the whole thing. Uh, and of course, they get the, the, the book in the haunted house that tells the stories, which I thought was very clever of them to do. I'm like, okay, that's, that's interesting. Um... And I like that. I like the characters. It was very um, Goonies slash Stranger Things, but set maybe a little bit of the Wonder Years, set in the 60s. I think it was in 68 is when it starts. Halloween in 1968. So around then, I really liked the characters. I thought they were pretty cool. I liked the actors that were playing them. I thought they did a really good job. The the ad adaptations of how they tell the story, I thought they did very well. I thought it was clever. Uh, is this movie perfect? No. But for what, how they tried to convert this into a movie, and I'm going to say series because there'll probably be two other movies the way it ends. I think they did a very good job of trying to translate that to a movie. And I think they did that very well. But again, it's not perfect. I, I think trying to convert that to a movie like that and a franchise, I guess you could say, not an easy thing. And I think they pulled it off. I really do. Because this could have been a disaster. But I think they did it really, really well. Um, but again, and then, you know, when you get them, the, you have like four monsters. So let's see. We had uh, Harold was the first one, the Scarecrow. And I thought they did a very good job. It looked like Harold with the exception of the belly. They took the belly out. Um, because they didn't want him to look too friendly, which I think would have been a better choice, though. I like the idea of something friendly and innocent looking or something that's not supposed to be harmful being more harmful. Like, it, it makes it more sinister to me. I, I don't know, but that's just me. But regardless, it was a really good scene. It was an interesting scene because in the book, Harold turns Tommy into... Well, he turns a farmer named Tommy or Thomas into a uh, basically a skin. Like, he skins him on top of a roof or whatever. But here, he turns this Tommy, who is a bully, into a scarecrow. Uh, which is kind of... The way it's filmed is kind of a little... 
unsettling. I'll, I'll say that it's unsettling. It's not that it's scary or anything. It's just it's it's uns, it's it's a little unsettling the way you see that happen with him. But in any case, so the next one is is the next one. I don't know if it's the red spot or if it's the 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 toe in the stew. Uh, where's my toe? Uh, we've all heard that. Both of them were done pretty well. The stew one with the toe in the stew. The setup for it was a little weak, in my opinion. I, I'm not going to give spoilers away, but I just, I don't know, it just seemed a little out of place the way they went about it. And then, of course, the corpse that shows up uh, looked really good. And the way they executed the ending of that, I thought they did very well. I, that was pretty good. But, like, the setup for it just seemed kind of odd. And I, to be honest, I was surprised they went with the... With, uh, Where's my toe there? I, I thought that's, that's a story that maybe wouldn't fit in there, but they went for it. it, it I guess because it's the most well-known stories, right? It's like, where's my toe? And the, and the corpse is looking for his toe, and he finds it and scares the kid in the room there. We've all kind of heard that. And this is just a different take on it, but uh, it, it was pretty cool. And then we go to the red spot, which is something... Not just women, but a lot of men fear uh, arachnids or spiders, and that whole I knew it was you knew it was coming because they hinted the spiders, and Ruth in the movie walks into a spider's web, and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, she's gonna get the the thing. You kind of knew that, and the way they executed that, but the spot itself was just getting absurd, where you wouldn't have gone to the emergency room. But then again, this is in the late 60s, right? So maybe they wouldn't do that. It was kind of like, yeah, you know, craziness. But uh, that was done pretty well. And uh, I like that. It was creepy. Uh, it's going to make a lot of people's skin crawl. For that's, that's for sure, because of the spiders and everything and the way that happens. But she survives. The other two did not survive. Well, from what we gather, they didn't survive. I mean, there could be a way to turn... Tommy back into a human and he'll be a nicer person then uh, Augie who who got taken by the the corpse with the toe he could maybe come back I don't know I, I don't I don't see but but Ruth survives which I find very interesting um, so that's good uh, and then we got the the red room or the dream which is well, this was the uh, well. Actually, I'll, yeah, I'll go with that one. So that that this one was probably the most haunting image, um, because the character, well, the the lady in white there, she is just menacing, maniacal, and that grin that they have on, and she looks just like the like in the book, um, and it's kind of creepy. Not like scary, but creepy, and the way they take, um, and I can't remember the kid's name now, but the way they take him is a little disturbing too, but you, it leaves the door open of like, and as they say at the end of the movie, that there's got to be a way to undo what's been done, and she's going to try to do that, uh, and the key is within the book. Uh, and lastly, uh, is the Jangly Man, which is kind of a play on me toe de uh, whatever, that, 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 I can never say it, um, story, where the head falls, that, you know, they pay, the kid takes $200, if he could stay in this house for, I think, $200, with, and he has to stay with his dog, so he stays with his dog, and he hears this guy saying something, and the dog kind of sings back, and then the head falls down the, the fireplace and scares, and that's pretty much how, how it ends. This is kind of a play on that, and I, I thought they did it very well. This turns out to be the Jangly Man, I guess they call him. And he was pretty weird. I'll say that. Initially, he was kind of creepy and scary and kind of, like, menacing. But then it got a little comical, I think. Um, like, they played the hand a little too far with it. But given the circumstances, when you're in that, trying to tell that story the way you tell it, I guess this is the best way you could do it. When you think of all the stories in there, that's kind of... A, it, it went okay, I thought, uh, to be honest. 
And that's pretty much how it, it, it ends, you know. Her, Ruthie, and her father survive. And now they're kind of they're driving away. They're going to try to figure out how to bring people back or, or whatever. So there'll be more scary stories to tell. Uh, I look forward to that. So that's kind of my mini review on that. Now here, before I get into the documentary, here's how... I, I, I guess which one I like the best. I think, for me, it would be the book. Is probably the best uh, version of this. Obviously, it's the original. I, I like that the best. Then I would say the audio book, and then I would say the movie out of the three mediums, out of the three things to select. I mean, the audio book's just an extension of, of the book, obviously, and it's just someone reading to you. But it was an interesting take on it uh, of the the books themselves that you would read, and I thought it was pretty cool. The movie is different, but the same, and I think it plays pays homage to the series very well. And it was done probably the best way you could do it. And I thought it was enjoyable. I liked it. I thought it was fun. It was a good little scare. Now, with that said, I'll get into the documentary, which is on Amazon Prime. Um, and that tells you more about the author. And how it came about and his relationship with his family, um, which I thought was great. It was a good insight, good, uh, I don't know. I mean, I like documentaries, but sometimes, uh, and there was some, some stuff where they get off track a bit with uh, the book banning. They went into a different other books and stuff where I didn't think they needed to go. But I know why they were going there and they were trying to make a point with books being banned and stuff. Because this book was banned back in the day. Um, in a lot of libraries and a lot of schools and everything. And I thought it was interesting because Alan uh, Schwartz, his son, meets the woman that was campaigning to get this book taken out of a book in... Out of the elementary public library in Seattle, I believe it was. And uh, and they met, they had a conversation. It was interesting, but I feel like a lot of that conversation was left out. Um, and it would have been interesting had she got to ask Alan, the author, what do you, th do you think this is appropriate for kids? My answer to that is, I think some kids, yeah. I think it's appropriate. Other kids, no. Like, I know my kid would freak out over this stuff. Uh, so she's not going to read it. She just knows herself instinctually. She knows, no, I'm not into scary things. I'm not doing that. As a parent, I'm all for checking things out for the kid before they get their hands on it if I can. Or if they do get their hands on it, I'm going to take a look at it and kind of make that judgment call myself. I wouldn't go to like a library or wherever and say, no, you can't put this out there. I wouldn't do that. But that's just me. I get why parents are concerned. Because there are some things in here you're like, oh, wow. <laughs> um... But I don't think it's, I think it's told in, in a way that we all grew up around anyway. Like it's folklore. It's, it's kind of, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't think it was that bad, but you know, that was the eighties, nineties, you know, who knows, but it was interesting. It was a good documentary. I recommend checking it out. Uh, if you want a little more background on this and then they showed some other people that, um, People that are younger than me that grew up with the series and their love of it. And it reminded me of me and my Star Wars. Uh, and, and, you know, me growing up with it. And, and then they had this book series. It was a very interesting way of seeing it and other people interpreting things and creating art, tattoos, and stuff. So it was just pretty cool to check out. So highly recommend scary stories to tell in the dark. I may read one and do a video. We'll see. We'll see. My reading aloud skills aren't all that great. Uh, I tend to flub that up, but we'll see. I don't know how I would go about it though. I gotta, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, I was going to go out today and check out a ghost cemetery area in my hometown of Cumberland but I decided not to do it because today my allergies were bothering me 
Tomorrow is supposed to rain, so probably not. But I think next week I will be doing it. So I'll go back on the uh, the road again uh, on location and check things out. And that'll be fun. I actually have a new, I guess you call it a selfie stick tripod thing coming tomorrow. <laughs> uh, because if you remember my monastery video, <laughs> the problem I had with that is the tripod I have, which is right here, which I like, it's good, but it's short and it's a little heavy and you hold it like this, your arm gets tired. I need something that just kind of goes up and I can kind of keep my arm down uh, and whatnot. So look for that. Things will be a little better on, on location. But with that, I'm going to go finish my smoke, chill out by the fire, probably read a story or two. Why not? Um, actually, I think the Viper is probably my favorite story out of the whole scary stories thing. I suggest you look it up. It's, <laughs> it's quite the punchline, I guess you could say. But in any case, I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you guys tomorrow and have a good night.